Sawa Banane family, we see you, we honor you, and we value you. Your gifts, along with God's grace, allow us to persevere, to mentor, and prepare new leaders as we co-create for future generations. The Proctor Conference is where future meets legacy. We are committed to the forward crusade of faith, equity, and reparatory justice, nationally and globally. We are the place where Ubuntu becomes reality. Your gifts to the Legacy Campaign enables our success, our sustainability, and secures the future. With vision, by faith, and through action, we are the Proctor Conference. I'm so grateful that there is in this world something called the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference. You've been on the wall doing the work. Sister Iva Carruthers and so many others, you represent the best of our faith. You represent the faith of the black church, the conscience of the American churches. Thank you for the work that you do. Family, the time has come to work the roots. The roots of Sam DeWitt Proctor, Gardner C. Taylor, Pauli Murray, Bayard Rustin, and the list continues. As the mission of the Sam DeWitt Proctor Conference continues to shape our ethos and worldview. Join us today by committing an annual one-time or recurring gift to the SDPC Legacy Campaign. We pray that you and your loved ones have been and will remain the benefactors of God's grace and mercy. Thank you. Amen. Good morning and welcome to the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference service of weekly prayer and song, the Proctor Prayer Demic. Today is Friday, March 29th, and whether you are on Facebook, on YouTube, or any other social media outlet, we are so thankful that you're with us this morning for prayer during the last Friday of Women's History Month. We would like to invite you to visit our website, sdpconference.info, and we would also like you to receive text message updates from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference, and you can sign up by texting SDPC to the number 84576. We promise we will only use your number for sharing information. And if you know anyone who does not have access to the internet, please let them know that they can listen to the service today at noon and 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time by dialing the number 909-318-7011. Thank you so much. And now to our host, Reverend Dr. Susan K. Smith. Good morning, everybody. And Sal Bonani, we see you, we hear you. you, we respect you. You are important to us and we are always glad to see you on Friday mornings. We absolutely know that prayer through this pandemic, the daily prayers and now the weekly prayers have gotten us through some tough, tough times and the tough times are not over yet. So we're so glad you're here. We give honor to God for the breath that we just took. You must always do that consciously. We thank God for our founders, the Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright Jr., the Reverend Dr. Ivor Carruthers, our general secretary, and the Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes, who is one of the co-chairs of the board of trustees of the Sam and DeWitt Proctor Conference. You know, right before we came on, we were talking about the fact that one of our HBCUs is inviting Ukrainian students in and paying their tuition. And I just kind of had to bite my lip because there's still so many things that um, that we struggle with, that I struggle with. My I statement, I, I wonder why, you know, sometimes we can't help our own. Where are the Haitians? I just wondered. But um, but that, that made me uh, remember <clears throat> Uh, something that Reverend Dr. Renita Weems wrote in, in her book, um, Listening for God, because you know, in times like that, sometimes you really do have to listen for God, right? You have to see what God is trying to tell you. And one of her um, uh, reflections in this book called The Tap of an Angel, and she refers to the song, oh, somebody, somebody touched me and it must have been the hand of the Lord. And she writes, at the close of an otherwise forgettable semester in a class on New Testament theology, the professor, a remarkably uninspiring sort who never spoke above a whisper, 
and who seemed utterly incapable of answering a question without a question, which might make for a provocative pedagogical style. If as a student, you didn't have to worry about grades and trying to pass poor courses, this professor who until the end of that semester was never my favorite professor because he never looked us straight in the face, but went around with his eyes cast to the ground, always looking as though he was lost in thinking about thinking said something the last day of class that came as close to a benediction as ever I've been able to recognize, removing his glasses and in characteristic, characteristic fashion, wiping them with the lapel of his tweed jacket. He said in a whisper to a class of students anxious to be dismissed so we might get a head start on the holiday travelers leaving Princeton for the Christmas break and now go out and preach with a bad conscience go out and preach with a bad conscience, knowing that for everything you choose to say in the pulpit, there was something you chose not to say, could have said, but for your own desperate reasons chose to ignore. Preach your best, my friends, and then be quick to sit down forever, looking over your shoulder at any moment with a disapproving tap of an angel. Sometimes we have to do that. We say what we what we want to say that we're comfortable with saying, and we don't say what we don't want to say. And I thought about that when they mentioned this Hampton thing, because I think that we have an obligation sometimes to speak out. We pray so that we get stronger. We pray so that we can feel the power of God surging through our bodies. We pray for that reason. And so um, I'm just gonna leave that right there. That is our call to worship to, 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 to persevere as Katanji Brown Jackson said, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson said yesterday to persevere and to push through and to pray without ceasing, no matter what's going on that makes you wanna shut down and shut up. We are blessed this morning to have as our prayer warrior, um, Reverend Valerie Bridgman, PhD. She is a friend and a sister. She's a bad sister. She's running half marathons all across the country. Um, she is a woman who says what she means and means what she says. And I love that her honesty is refreshing and comforting in a time when so many of us don't say what we want to say or need to say or feel. We won't have that problem with Dr. Bridgman. Reverend Bridgman, PhD, is the Dean and Vice President of Academic Affairs at Methodist Theological School in Ohio and the founding president and CEO of Women Preach Incorporated, the premier organization that brings preachers and leaders to full prophetic voice. She um, leads people, guides people, mentors people, helps people, teaches people. She is a blessing. So we are honored to have her as our prayer warrior today. Um, the music today will be brought to us by our own Opal Staples. And after the music, the voice that you will hear will be Dr. Valerie Bridgman, PhD. Welcome them. It is that time again. It is time to worship and I'm so excited to worship with you. Come on in, let's enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Come on. I love you, Lord. Yes, we do, Lord. And we lift our voice. to worship you, <clears throat> oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your 
indeed, God, we love you. Good morning, people of the Most High God. Good morning to you. May you receive this time of prayer as a time to come aside, to rest where you are, to share with God your heart's yearning, your soul's desire to cry out together in community and individually in the great hopes that the God who was and is and is to come will not simply hear us, but as First John say, answer us in the day of trouble. Let's pray together. God of our weary years and silent tears, you who have brought us this far on the way. Meet us this morning in our time of need. We confess to our weariness, but we are mindful, great God of heaven, that you are the one who holds on the, hold us by your everlasting arms that are underneath us. You, the many-breasted one, nourishes us. You, the midwife, brings into being all of our desires we come, knowing that we need you and that there's something that only you can do for us, that we cannot do for ourselves. We are mindful that as two or three gather together, you already are in our midst. And as our Quaker friend says, bidden or unbidden, you are here. There is no place where we are that you are not. There is no place we can flee from your presence. The psalmist tells us that if we made our bed in Sheol, even to the farthermost corners of the earth, there you would be. And we are confident by your presence this morning, our God, that you are with us, whether we are celebrating or whether we are in despair, you are with us. For the God with us, Emmanuel, we give thanks. We honor you and glorify your name. As your people, as members of your church, we come before you asking for you to intervene on our behalf. Disrupt our wars and rumors of wars. Oh God, not just the conflict in Russia and Ukraine, though we pray for those who are being orphaned and made to suffer there. Not just for them, but for those who are still under the grief of Boko Haram in Nigeria, for those who are struggling in Haitia, for those who are struggling in uh, Ethiopia, God, for those who are struggling in the Tigray War, we ask you, O oh God, to enter in with peace where there is warring, to help those of us who are here on this earth to be your hands and your feet, your thought and your presence for those who are struggling under bombs and bows. God, we are all struggling. Where one suffers, all suffer. And so help us, oh God, to be not just sympathetic, but empathetic toward those who are in direct fire, knowing that where there's injustice anywhere, there is injustice everywhere. And it is our bounden duty as those who claim to love the commonwealth of God to enter into the fray as ambassadors of peace. Help us to be there. Bless immigrants and refugees across several borders throughout the world, Palestine and Israel, Russia and Ukraine. Haiti, as we have already said, many of the places in Mexico and other places in South America and on the African continent, God, all the places where indigenous people still struggle for rights. Yes, God, even here in these yet to be United States, God intervene and help us as ambassadors of your grace to be a part of your intervention. God, I pray for nation states throughout the world that they would reign in justice. I pray for those who are 
under the bombing right now, the test bombing of China, God, those in South Korea who are at direct impact, God, I pray for them. And I pray for our government that does not often deal in justice, but in that which is convenient to the political powers. God, I pray for justice and not just for political convenience. God, I am aware that power can be neither good nor bad, but it is horrible when it is used to abuse people's lives and liberty, rights. And I pray, God, that you would arrest the attention of everyone who sees themselves and their work only as, quote, staying in power. God, disrupt that. The, the, the prophet said, everyone who thirsts come to the waters and those who have no money come by and eat. God, I am mindful that there are many in the world without what they need in the way of sustenance, sustenance, whether it is food or a place to live or clean water to drink. But I am also mindful that the earth is yours and belongs to you in the fullness that in that everything that humans need, everything that creation needs to thrive and survive, you already provided. The Haitian Proverbs reminds us that you give, but you don't share. Sharing is the work of humans. Help us, oh God, to fight on the front for a clean environment, for clean water, for the food that is enough already for everybody to eat. God, help us to disrupt the poisoning of the waters the poisoning of the earth that then poisons our food and poisons the eco ecological ecosystem, animals and insects and all manner of living creatures, all of which you called good. Help us, oh God, to find our place in your ecosystem and to not try to take up more space than is necessary. God, I pray for your church and our many disputes and our many cracks as vessels of clay that get it wrong more times than we get it right. Help us, oh God, as leaders in your church and as those who are trying to bear the image of Christ in the world, to be your representation, to be your vicar, your presence. God, give us a spirit of humility. Give us a sense of longing for your truth, knowing that the only thing that will set us free is truth. God, grow us into the kind of people that thirst and hunger after righteousness. Baker woman, God, you who knead the dough and put yeast in it to make it rise. Put in us what we need so that we will rise in a way that feeds the world of your grace. You who sweep the house to find the one coin, remind us of our value to you, sweeping woman, God. Remind us that it is not in our economic value, but in the very fact that we are made in your image. And not just those of us who name the name of Christ, but everyone ever born bears your imprint. Remind us so that we treat every human being with dignity and with grace and everyone as if they deserve what you have already provided. Bless Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference and all of its constituency and all of its work. Our founders and those who have put their hand to the task before us. 
remind us that we are just one part of the work, but our part is important. Help us to be faithful and diligent. Help us to do this work with a sense of urgency and integrity. Grow in us a sense of that urgency and a sense of collaboration that we would join ourselves to those who also want to see a world that reflects your glory and your grace. I pray for all who are sick this morning. Our ancestors, our elders have often said to us that you are in fact a doctor in a sick room. We know it for ourselves, it's our own testimony, but we're asking you, God, to be a palpable presence to those who are sick. May they know your healing presence and your healing touch. Even, oh God, if healing means crossing over into your eternal presence, help them to rest in the full assurance that you are a healing God. Bless those who are grieving anticipatory grief and those who are grieving the loss of those who have died, not just of this pandemic, but of other diseases, including stress. Help us, oh God, to be remindful that you are the one that help those of us who grieve so that we grieve not as those who have no hope. Our hope is in you. You promise to be with us when we mourn, be with us. You promise to heal, heal us. Meet the needs on every front, oh God. Students who are looking to uh, graduate this May, who have senioritis and who literally are just trying to finish that last paper. Give them concentration and grace. Bless parents, bless preachers. Bless pastors, bless teachers, bless doctors and nurses, and all of us who are serving the best we can to be good citizens in the commonwealth of God and on this ball of water and dirt. Bless us so that we may be a blessing. I ask this, O oh God, in the name of all that's holy, in the many ways that you show up in the world, Father and Mother of us all, in the presence of our ancestors, that great cloud of witnesses, and in the strong name of Jesus. And all the people of God who hear this prayer and agree says, Ashe and Amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are the way made miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are the way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are here. Touching every heart, we worship you, we worship you. You are here, healing every heart. We worship you, we worship you. You 
stop. You never stop working. God, we thank you right now, God. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. How many of you all know God is faithful? Listen. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. Let the church say amen. My goodness. We give God praise for Reverend Bridgman, Dr. Bridgman's prayer. She hit every part of where our spirits might be sitting on this day because of all that's going on. And then with the music, um, but um, Opal, I just feel like we've had a great big old dinner um, and I don't know about you, but I feel like my plate is overflowing. We are grateful. Thank you, Dr. Bridgman. Thank you, Opal. We have come to the part of our service where we give everybody an opportunity to invest in the work of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference. We work here in the United States, but we also work all over the world. We connect with people all over the world. Our um, own Reverend Tiana Webb um, has connected us, she and Dr. Ivor with the CSW um, uh, uh, 66, United Women, United Nations Women. And one of the stories that um, 
I heard it will never leave me. And I was reminded of this, Dr. Bridgman, when you're talking about the environment, but this African woman said that they, in the poisoning the waters, and this African woman said that they, you know, she bought, got fish for her family and was gonna feed her family and opened it up and could not feed this fish to her family because inside the belly of this fish, there was nothing but black oil. We connect with the world. We hear stories like that. We work um, on, on situations like that. And so your investment is not just for us here in the continental United States. It is for people all over the world, for women, for children, for the oppressed all over the world. And so we invite you to invest. You can do so by visiting our website, sdpconference.info slash legacy fund. And as Reverend Jamar said at the beginning, you can do a one-time donation to the Legacy Fund or make it a recurring gift. Or you can look, go to Givelify and, and look for us, the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference. Any way you do it, invest, invest. The tiniest little investment will bring forth the greatest results, the greatest dividends, the greatest returns. And that's what we do. We live so that we can help other people. We don't just live for ourselves. So we hope that you will do that. This brings us to the end of um, our worship. I'm, I'm very moved. I was moved by the prayer, moved by the music. I, I can hardly talk. But I do want us to remember, Dr. Weems said in that thing, look for the disapproving tap of an angel when you are doing the work that God has called you to do. When you are saying what you, know, you want to say and not saying what you need to say, look for the disapproving tap of the angel. Be inspired to go past your comfort. Go into the place where God would have us go. God strengthened us. The, we say greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God put us here and put God's spirit in us so that we would do the work that don't nobody else want to do. Look for the disapproving tap of an angel. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for being here this week. We hope that we will see you again next week. Come back, bring somebody with you and have a wonderful week. Take good care. Bye-bye.